Can you hear me loud and clear? Can we get started? Good afternoon. It's an honor for MedRio Checkup to participate in the FIS Forum 2021. I'd like to thank the organizers and the KPMG team shedding light on such a relevant subject for companies and one that uh, represents a sustainability for these companies. I'll be the moderator and uh, we'll talk about the ESG concept and health. And we have two specialists to discuss the subject with us. Uh, Louis Wolf, uh, an attorney, accountant, economist with a master's in law from Brazil and the US and a director at KPMG and he's a leader of the tax and ESG department. Our second speaker is Sheila Mittelstad, who graduated in nutrition and administration. She has an MBA in health, in addition to being a partner at KPMG and a, a leader in health for KPMG Brazil. Welcome, and uh, Luis, I'll give you the floor. At the end of the session, we'll have a Q&A uh, session between us and questions from the audience will be answered uh, by uh, us afterwards. Good afternoon, I'm Louis Wolf and I work with uh, tax and labor audit for over 20 years. I do uh, due diligence, uh, which uh, generally speaking, uh, when a company wants to buy another company uh, my customer is the buying company and they need to know all of the problems that may possibly exist with the company that they wish to acquire and esg is highly connected with uh, fiscal and labor audit which is what i do having said that i must tell you that many people say that esg is the new normal actually it's not new at all our constitution from 1988 provides for uh, some rules and standards uh, for uh, caring for the environment. So that's not new at all. But all of these concepts and uh, the way ESG has been strengthening itself uh, from the beginning of the pandemic, it gained a lot of traction, especially uh, in the beginning of 2020 due to the pandemic and the sleepless nights, uh, the anxiety that all of us CEO, CEOs from companies all around the world, but even before the pandemic, the uh, world was already concerned about ESG and that's reflected uh, by this letter written by Larry Fink, who is uh, responsible for investing an amount uh, that is equivalent to uh, five times the GDP of Brazil. He is uh, the CEO of the BlackRock uh, Investment Fund, and he said that he would no longer invest in non-sustainable companies. And he said that back in the beginning of 2020. And what uh, Larry Fink says, uh, the annual letter that he writes uh, kind of becomes uh, the guidebook to be followed by everybody in the business world. And in the beginning of that year, he said that he would only invest in sustainable companies. So that is considered the um, beginning of this concern around ESG. Brazil uh, headquartered uh, the Eco92, probably everybody remembers that. Uh, so uh, that was concerns, uh, but uh, this, uh, took the center stage of the discussion as people started noticing that they would have to leave something bigger to society. That is not uh, told by us. It was the uh, big CEOs of big companies that made the decision to become more sustainable. 
um, as an example, there is a stat oil uh, like the Petrobras of uh, Norway. Now it's called Eknor uh, to show that it is not only related to oil. The uh, Total company, a giant company in the oil and gas sector. Uh, if you like so soccer, you know that uh, they sponsor the Libertadores Cup. So as of uh, 2020, they um, became known as Total Energy. Uh, British Petroleum, a large uh, oil and gas company, and I think the uh, change uh, that they uh, made uh, is nice. Uh, they're uh, not only uh, British Petroleum, uh, they're Bio Petroleum. So uh, there's a new thing going on, and this comes in the wake of the post-pandemic scenario. And I, I want to tell you something. ESG does not come only from Green Agenda. I'm giving you examples of fossil fuels, but uh, the acronym in, in the acronym E uh, does not stand only for environment. Uh, we have uh, to be concerned uh, with the S uh, for social because uh, there's no use a company uh, bragging about uh, being uh, carbon neutral if uh, they employ people in under conditions that are analogous to slavery. And at the same time, uh, they may not uh, ha have a diversity uh, or uh, they may be uh, racist or uh, homophobic. If that's the case, they're not being ESG compliant. And G is also very important because a G refers to the way the company is managed. When a company is well managed, it avoids unpleasant surprises along the way. And I'm going to mention two cases without mentioning the names. If a, a dam collapses, for instance, uh, eliminating uh, two cities or a customer uh, being attacked to death in a supermarket, all that led to financial loss because governance uh, may uh, have been flawed in those cases. And in the uh, healthcare sector, governance is extremely relevant. And I'm sure that my colleague Shayla is going to talk about it, which is data protection. In addition to data protection, the concern uh, that a healthcare administrator uh, must have uh, goes beyond. Uh, it's about uh, cybersecurity. Major robberies occur uh, with uh, theft of uh, password and data. Uh, and we have a recent case uh, that paralyzed a, a sector. And when we have good governance, when we have uh, good mechanisms for cybersecurity or um, the security of dams, or uh, if you get good, give good training to your employees, you can avoid surprises along the way. And big surprises mean and uh, generate uh, losses uh, to your reputation and uh, to your finances. So companies that comply with the ESG deliver better results to shareholders. For one, there are no unpleasant surprises along the way. And second, employees are more engaged. And thirdly, uh, the uh, consumers are more proud to buy services and products from that company. So I told you that I am a professional that uh, was born and raised uh, in the tax sector. I have two masters uh, related to uh, taxes and ESG is highly connected to taxes. In what way? Well, let me take a step back. Uh, money from taxes is used to fund common welfare. I won't go into political discussion as to whether the money is well uh, administered or not. But for instance, uh, the police officers in my neighborhood, uh, they get paid with tax money. The vaccines that we all took, uh, we didn't pay for that. That was paid for with taxpayer money. So what is uh, the uh, biggest discussion that I want to focus on? A company that does not fulfill its uh, tax obligations adequately is not uh, contributing to a common welfare. So uh, one commitment uh, that I see uh, is that uh, companies are now uh, producing uh, reports about their tax practices. So there's this uh, public commitment uh, in the site and another aspect that um, ESG uh, has in common um, with uh, the tax department, the tax area are fiscal incentives. If you wanna build a uh, 
wind power plant or a solar power plant in Brazil, you'll have access to many benefits that uh, a company operating in the coal sector will not have access to. And this is almost the 10 minute, 10 minute of uh, my conversation. But another secret is that ESG does not result from a state regulation. The state does not have a guidebook explaining what should be done. ESG uh, results from the self-regulation uh, of the capitalist system. For instance, uh, when the uh, European uh, market says that uh, they won't buy uh, beef uh, if the cattle was raised in a deforested area, uh, or when an additional tariff is charged on uh, importing cement, something like that. Uh, so it, it's as if uh, capitalism is self-regulating to become sustainable. And uh, that's uh, revolutionary. And it's even curious to see uh, what uh, happened in Glasgow uh, was a change in Brazil's behavior when it comes to the environment. That did not occur due to political experience. That pressure occurred uh, because uh, the CEOs of, of the uh, 100 Brazilian companies, the biggest Brazilian companies, sent a letter to Minister Joaquim Leite uh, talking about how to change that because they were no, no longer able to access international markets. So it's all about pressure from capitalism. It's all about making a green agenda. And uh, thankfully, Brazil had a very positive participation. And I can uh, send you a link talking about that. And that was due to uh, pressure from capitalism. And there's a song that says that the future is no longer the way it was before. We learned several lessons in the post-pandemic scenario. Uh, we have the uh, Green Deal in Europe, which is a huge fortune of the European GDPs that will be dedicated to the green recovery of economy. And one third of these uh, millionaire uh, GDP uh, will uh, be um, allocated to the generation of uh, um, job positions, energy transition, and the world changing before our very eyes. And one third secret, I have a very good information, uh, very good education. I'm a lawyer, an accountant, and an economist, but I must confess that I uh, had, uh, I, I was uh, restless because I was not uh, working directly with, uh, with, this purpose, like you do, healthcare professionals, professionals, and, and now that I started working with ESG, I can work with that uh, like you do every day. H having said that, I am available to talk to you later. If you want to reach out to me on LinkedIn, uh, you can uh, reach out to me. Uh, please uh, feel free uh, to look me up. It was a really a pleasure to participate in this event with uh, Gilberto, and now I'll give the floor back, back to you. Thank you, uh, Louis. Your focus on the environment is fundamental. And uh, we should be concerned about caring for and preserving our habitats, which is our planet. Some decades ago, for some decades now, um, the uh, mankind is concern, has been concerned about emitting gases into the atmosphere due to several different activities undertaken by mankind that harm the ozone layer uh, with increasing um, temperatures and uh, ice melting. So when we attack nature, nature fights back with tsunamis, hurricanes, uh, droughts, and whatnot. And this is nature, aggressive, violent, untamed when attacked. But if it's cared for, it is generous and a good partner, just like our body. If we mistreat it with, a not health, with an unhealthy lifestyle, when we pollute it, we cannot expect anything else but disease. A, a well-cared for a nature is equivalent to uh, health for 
mankind. And uh, health is equivalent to prevention. I think any company now can make the effort of preserving trees, of becoming digital, and of uh, correctly uh, collecting waste coming from the health sector. Anyway, having said that, thank you very much, Luis, for your comments. Then we'll cover the uh, S aspect of the ESG concept. Now I'll give the floor to our dear Shayla. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, Louis. I'll quickly introduce myself and I will uh, talk about uh, the uh, social aspects and uh, talk about uh, the social aspects related to health, uh, which certainly uh, impair the ESG agenda. And uh, we uh, want it uh, to be agreed upon uh, across all of the health uh, care department players. We've been talking about health uh, since 2004, and uh, we understand that ESG uh, should be connected uh, to financial uh, results. And we can uh, mention that uh, XP and uh, BTG, Pactual, uh, they are uh, dealing with ESG in their agendas with a very well-defined discussions and uh, with uh, corporate environmental governance, I mean, and social governance uh, very well sustained by action plans. And among the healthcare providers, uh, one of the most important uh, themes for ESG was uh, the uh, waste produced by the uh, healthcare industry. We know that uh, we generate infecting uh, waste, radioactive waste, and there, there has been a regulation for some years now for uh, managing uh, waste in the healthcare sector, which is uh, the uh, requirement of having the PGRSS, uh, which is this administration program. But we know that now in Brazil, we continue to generate around uh, 3,000 tons um, that are infecting, uh, and most of them coming from uh, not landfills, but uh, from hospital waste, and therefore probably generating, uh, creating uh, bacterial contamination and even viral contamination. We know that that's recurring in Brazil because we are, are still a developing country. And uh, having a contract between uh, payers and uh, the uh, contractors, if you have ESG uh, in this uh, relationship, that uh, will then define how to deal with uh, waste management in that context. And if the actions are effective, especially because now healthcare institutions, laboratories, hospitals, clinics, many of them attempted to uh, have a, a national or international quality certificate, a Canadian a certificate, a joint commission, and all of them require at least um, a, a regulatory agenda for ESGs that's really well established on the part of these companies. We know that the uh, sequential contamination of uh, waste from uh, the healthcare sectors uh, can uh, contaminate rivers, effluents, and bring about a series of environmental tragedies. And uh, we are now looking into the ESG uh, aspects related to the environment. And most of the hospitalizations in underdeveloped, underdeveloped countries are related to the ingestion of contaminated water, which is to say that a sanitary management is still a problem and should be included into a sustainable ESG uh, plan focus, uh, focusing on the environment. Uh, speaking about the social aspect of uh, ESG, uh, we have a diversity, equity, and inclusion, and that is widely discussed in the healthcare sector and uh, in its corporate agendas. But in healthcare, we deal more strongly, and I want to draw your attention to in this forum, um, we deal with uh, aspects related to the patient within the healthcare institutions, risk management, uh, good conditions, uh, good treatment conditions, which are uh, under the social agenda of ESG and costs to provide patients with access to these institutions. 
So establishing minimum costs for the admission of patients, uh, at least uh, to a primary level of care, as well as the experience that uh, they uh, have with the providers uh, have, has to do with the social aspect of ESG in the healthcare system, whether it is public or private. And uh, one thing that uh, we uh, mentioned, we discussed a lot about ESG uh, recently after due to the pandemic is about uh, the experience of the uh, workforce uh, within uh, the companies due to the pandemic. Uh, we know that uh, we started uh, looking into the social aspects as to how collaborators, how employees are treated from a social ESG agenda perspective, how they're cared for uh, from a humanized perspective, which is a, a term that's both applied to health, uh, to healthcare and also to ESG. In terms of governance, we have a very different part in uh, healthcare, in addition to clinical governance, and both of them need very strong synergy in this context, because corporate governance, we all know, are based on equity, transparency, data sharing, and reports. Now, clinical governance within ESG is, once again, having the clinical part of it very much aligned with the top governance so that patient safety and good clinical outcomes, how the patient is cared for and how the patient uh, is uh, then uh, discharged, avoiding readmission is something uh, recurrent. So clinical clinical staff management is something a bit different in terms of ESG and healthcare. In addition to what happens in ESG and health, and uh, we have data safety, cyber security, because healthcare is worth gold, they are sensitive data, and we've seen, we've seen a cybernetic uh, crisis, things happening, things that we have never thought about. Companies believe they were super protected in terms of cyber security. And we see that's not quite so. A company may stop operating because of that. So risk management and data security of our patients have to be based on ESG agenda of boards of C-level and what is an ESG uh, agenda correlated with uh, financial results and what we call public trust. Really be trusted by the public in the healthcare. We have to bear in mind when we are talking about ESG to reduce what we use and can impact the environment, similarly to uh, reducing pro projects and data. I'm going to reuse whatever I can within the healthcare system, avoiding generating risks to patient and recycle. So reduction, reuse and recycle is very strong in this agenda, especially in terms of environment. And this is very much aligned with the topics of innovation. We've been talking a lot about that because healthcare is within uh, omni-channel digital platforms. Patients have access to telehealth, telemedicine, but with Dow data governance and cybersecurity, it cannot, uh, it's not going to uh, work and to have a sustainability report that really considers all of that. Therefore, ESG topic should be part of our executive understanding. It should be part of all our discussions in terms of strategic planning, and everyone who is involved in healthcare supply chain, regardless, regardless of being private or public, it's a mandatory schedule so that, uh, or an agenda so that we can have really a 
good control of all the beneficiaries, patients, regardless of being hospital or laboratory services. Luis Wolf probably knows that when we started talking about ESG in healthcare, uh, people used to say, who cares when? Uh, so it really uh, conveys the idea of ESG. Unless we take care of those three elements, corporate governance, environment, and social responsibility, uh, we are probably doing something wrong and we won't be able to have the sustainability that the business expects to have. So I think that's um, my contribution. I'd like to thank Medi Rio and Fuse for uh, the invitation. And I am here to answer your questions and uh, to uh, discuss further about ESG and healthcare. ESG can be applied to all companies geared to health, each company with their own peculiarities. So, and when it's, well, we do not deal with disease, hospitalization, severe patients, much on the contrary. We promote health. We deal with life and not death. And very good. In the, con the S context, we privilege Sheila to work in terms of educating for health. All that information acquired on our day-to-day, -day, in our day-to-day, -day, in terms of prevention and healthcare through books, interviews, articles, we transfer this to society. And that individual, as they understand and practice, we hope they gain health. And with this, naturally, the cost to public health and private health is reduced. So all this, so everyone somehow wins. So our S, it means educating for health in terms of the concept ESG regarding corporate governance. We in 2016 launched our code of conduct. It was the first clinic in Rio de Janeiro, along with the contributors. We drafted our code of conduct and naturally it's updated. The code of conduct is actually making or doing what is right. The way of doing it is the right way. So it's such an important topic that it should be part of the grids and uh, the disciplines of our higher education schools. We've seen recently several scandals in public health and the context, the principle of compliance has been ignored. Another important piece of information is compliance. So we had this general law of data protection, LGPD, that is implemented in Brazil and in effect, so that we can protect sensitive data. We did, uh, we find a lot of work with lawyers in terms of legislation to train our staff that deal with sensitive data to actually do things with total security. And finally, also, considering this data protection law, we had cybersecurity. It's no use for you to use 100% the law inserting in law and leaving open windows at your internet, your IT, when any hacker can penetrate, subtract important data and healthcare data is filled with information and exposes the life of clients. So it's work done during the pandemic, quite long, and work that is not cheap, but represents great security and safety for customers and magic shakeup, and has brought us 
in terms of plants, great benefits. Why? The companies today, they hire services in healthcare, already have their contracts, specific clauses of compliance, LGBT and cybersecurity. And more than that, more to contracts and health services they are seeking with providers evidence of work on the good application of this concept. So it is a topic that has come to be developed, to be enriched, to be used. And I have no doubt about that. So we have the sustainability in the market and it will be the protection of our house and our planet. And in this line, I would like to thank our dear Ms. Wolf, Sheila, for the beautiful presentation. And I'm going to be available to FIS, the organizers, please, Josie and team, collect the questions and it can send them to us. And little by little, Louise, Sheila, and I will be able to proceed with great ple pleasure to the answers. Is that good enough? Sheila, Luis, uh, thank you very much for your participation, for your presentation. Extremely rich presentation, fundamental to all our class, health class, uh, with the application that is uh, the broadest sense in the healthcare industry. And certainly, we're going to be considering the importance of the topic, replicating, and other fora will be back again to be in touch and generate culture to our audience in the healthcare industry. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Roberto. Thank you, Luis. Thank you very much for the partnership. Thank you very much, Sheila. All the very best to you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you.